Not all dogs go to heaven. Especially those that hold out on us with their novel. Hey guys, it's Phoebe. Welcome to Watch Mojo. Today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst things Brian Griffin has ever done. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. We're looking at the most despicable things this talking dog has done. And we're only counting real Brian's misdeeds, so no clones or alternate reality versions. Also, spoilers ahead. Okay. Number 10, Murdering Rupert. Okay. When Stewie pays more attention to his teddy bear Rupert than to Brian, it drives the dog crazy. So much so that he chews Rupert to shreds in a drunken fit, causing a major rift between the iconic twosome. How about you kill something I love? How about I do that? Whoa, 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 okay. Later, Brian admits that he did it on purpose, out of jealousy. Hardly a valid excuse for murdering his most prized companion and sole confidant. But I was sick of always playing second fiddle to that bear. He's not even real. To Brian's credit, he does earn Stewie's trust back by helping him send off the departed bear and secretly gives his friend a new Rupert. But it barely makes up for the dog's petty behavior over a stuffed toy. Number nine, tricking Quagmire. Oh, come on, Brian, don't do that. Don't cry, be a man. Even though Quagmire hates Brian's guts, he takes it upon himself to pay for the dog's teeth replacement surgery. With a new dazzling smile, Brian lands a successful job as a real estate agent and decides to thank Quagmire by tricking him into buying horrible, rundown property, then avoiding him so he can't get out of his contract. This is a dump! Well, maybe it's still got a nice ocean view. The harbor is poisoned. It really says something when you're more underhanded and malicious than a perverted sex maniac, especially one that willingly helped you out when no one else bothered. Screwing over the people who helped you? I don't know how you sleep at night. It makes Quagmire's hatred more sympathetic, and Brian's comeuppance at the end well-deserved. Number eight, his affair with Tori. The only thing sadder than Brian's writing career is his love life. When he manages to sleep with a pretty dame named Tori, she turns out to be married to a Navy SEAL named Vic. You got a dog? Uh, yeah. I rescued him from the pound. Brian pretends to be their new pet dog so that he and Tori can continue their affair. And it seems like the perfect scam until Vic catches wind that Tori's cheating and chains Brian outside as a guard dog on the lookout. Shh, be cool. This is the guy whose wife I'm banging. Oh, what a romantic way to put it. Thankfully, he never finds out that Brian is the scumbag. And once again, Stewie comes in to save his canine companion, even though he really doesn't deserve it for going along with this sexcapade. Number seven, his literal blind date. In yet another ongoing chapter of Brian's failed love life, he hits it off with a blind woman named Kate. Unfortunately, and hilariously, she hates dogs. So Brian bends over backwards to hide what he really is. I'm just not really a dog person, I guess. Oh. Uh, yeah, me neither. Dog people can get pretty annoying. While also impressing her with fake feats during their dates, the ruse almost works until he meets her parents, who have perfect vision and is found out as both a dog and a liar. But I can't get over the fact that you lied to me. You screwed up, Brian. This could have been a good learning experience about honesty. If Brian didn't decide in the end to trick her with a fake voice, once again exploiting her blindness and learning absolutely nothing. Yeah. Number six, being a bad father. In the appropriately titled episode, Brian's a Bad Father, Brian does very little to be part of his estranged son Dylan's life until he learns that Dylan has a successful career on the Disney Channel. You want a job on my show? Hey, hey, don't put the universe's words in my mouth, okay? I don't know, Dad. I've, I've barely seen you in the past few years. Unsurprisingly, Brian exploits Dylan's connections to land himself a job on the show, makes all kinds of arrogant changes, and steals all the craft services' food. I thought they were anybody's Diet Coke. They're for work. I work at home. Clearly, the episode's title was being too generous, as Brian is barely a father at all, distancing himself from his own child until it seems like he can use him to further his writing career, which, let's be real, is going nowhere fast. You're a terrible father. I never want to see you again! Number 5, Assaulting Lois. Even before this episode, we've seen that Brian harbors romantic feelings for Lois, but he usually keeps it under control for the sake of his friendship with Peter. However, when Lois and Peter's relationship is on the rocks, she and Brian start growing a little closer. It seems sweet until Brian loses control and tries to force himself on Lois. <laughs> oh my god, Brian, no! Thankfully, Lois is able to push him off before the situation can escalate, and he 
deeply regrets his actions. But that hardly changes the fact that he made a move on his best friend's wife. And worse, didn't take no for an answer. And we thought Quagmire was bad. Sure Number four, giving Stewie and Chris herpes. Stewie and Brian are the show's most developed duo. Stewie decides to cement that bond by performing a blood ritual with the dog. Brian agrees, only for Stewie to wake up with herpes, thanks to his so-called blood brother. Oh my god! Your mouth looks like the underside of a boat! Out of all the horrible things Brian has done to Stewie, belittling his creativity out of jealousy, treating him like dirt, or frightening him for fun, this is the most underhanded. He knew he was infected and swapped blood with Stewie anyway. It turns out that he also gave Chris herpes, making him a repeat offender. Number three, disregarding Stewie's safety. When Brian finds out that Stewie attends a rundown, unsafe daycare, he goes to give the negligent teacher a piece of his mind, until he sees how attractive she is. Excuse me, are you Miss Emily? Yeah, hi, who are you? Uh, Brian? He then spends the rest of the episode ignoring Stewie's suffering and focusing on scoring a date with the teacher. In fact, he even goes so far as to keep Stewie from ratting her out after she dislocates his shoulder. You are not going anywhere. I finally have a date with Miss Emily tomorrow, and I'm not gonna let you or anybody else get in my way until I have seen every inch of her naked. Brian calls the police on her only after he finds out that she has a boyfriend. So basically, he only does the right thing when he knows he can't get what he wants. What you did to these kids? There is a special place in hell for people like you. Why are he and Stewie friends again? Number two, shooting a waiter. While on a rescue mission, Stewie gives Brian a gun and silencer to defend himself against a gang of kidnappers. While reluctant at first, Brian starts having a little too much fun with his firearm, comparing it to a video game. Oh, this is like a video game. He manages to gun down a few grunts, and then shoots a waiter on another boat for literally no reason other than to show off. It's especially terrible with that cocky smile on his face as he pulls the trigger. And it was especially dumb since it was his last bullet, leaving him defenseless against the bad guys. Bad shooting, Tex. That's for shooting one of our guys! Yeah! Before we unveil Brian at his very worst, here are a few dishonorable mentions. You're gonna have to come with us. And Jeff, you might want to call your sponsor. You did this, didn't you? I knew you were a little twerp as soon as I met you. He did this! You don't have to do this, Patty! Brian's just taking advantage of you! What? That's crazy! What? Why would he do that? Because you have an amazing body! I wrote a book. What's that? It's like a long magazine. Huh? It's like the internet made out of a tree. Oh. Weird. You want to have sex in the bathroom? Oh, gosh, what a treat. Yes, yes, I, 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 would, I would like that. Submitted for your approval. A family pet with the uncontrollable urge to bury shiny objects in the yard. Maybe if I feel bad, they don't have to. Wow. You know, that's incredibly noble and mature, Meg. You know, I think you might be the strongest person in this house. Number one, his act of heroism. Brian's definition of heroism needs some work. Oh As he explains how he got a hernia while performing an act of incredible heroism, we see him trying to rescue a pretty woman from drowning in her car. However, the minute the woman mentions she has a baby with her, Brian accidentally lets her car roll into the ocean, leaving the lady and her child to drown to death. While Brian was once considered the book-smart voice of reason, he often seems to have devolved into a pretentious and selfish character with only his own interest at heart, even when there are lives at stake. If that's not despicable, then we're not sure what is. Oh, 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 slipping, slipping, sorry! Bad dog, bad dog. Yeah, so what do you guys think of our dog. list? Let us know in the comments below. And if you need more Family Guy in your life, check out these videos. Okay, um, I mentioned to say, like, yeah, no one that I did this. So, like, yes, that guy that's going to be in here, um... She's like the hero of this song. You can see she's a clever self and then like with Lewis, with Stewie and all that. Cool with Peter. Um, and it's a good goodbye guys. See you in another video. We have another bad guy.